on this episode of Cronkite Sports on Fox Sports Arizona. A peek inside a local training facility that consistently draws athletes from across the NFL. ASU football players gear up for the NFL draft. A Tucson native climbs her way onto a national stage. From the freezing cold to sunny skies, Tracy Smith transitioned to ASU baseball and five titles in five years, how one school dominates their sport. Hello and welcome to this edition of Cronkite Sports on Fox Sports Arizona. I'm Kristen Kirby. This show is produced by student journalists at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. Just a few months ago, Arizona played host to the Super Bowl, the pinnacle for NFL players. For many, the journey to that mountaintop starts right here in the Valley of the Sun. Go, go, head, three, three, go. Brett Bartholomew, a strength and conditioning coach for the last 10 years, leads NFL players through morning workouts at Exos in North Phoenix, one of seven Exos facilities in the country geared towards training elite athletes. Exos recently made Fast Company's list of the world's top 10 most innovative companies of 2015 in fitness. Prior to last season, over 100 NFL players trained with Exos. We all cultivate a really humble mindset that we're all trying to do the best we can to serve our athletes with the information that's out there in the science uh, realm of things and then also just with the practicality of coaching. The first thing is we have a great group of people who care. The second is that group of people all do different things. So instead of just having trainers or coaches, we have nutritionists, therapists, chefs that all work under one roof here. The group training in Phoenix on our visit in March included quarterbacks Colin Kaepernick and Tyrod Taylor, offensive guard Richie Incognito, wide receiver Quentin Patton, and safety Anton Exum Jr. I came here for a few weeks after the combine last year, um, so that was my first time getting acclimated to the facility and some of the people that work here and stuff so um, I liked my experience when I was here in the past and decided I would come back um, this time me and my one of my old teammates Tyrod Taylor. Taylor the former Ravens backup quarterback recently signed with the Buffalo Bills and has a chance to compete for the starting job. Certain guys have different routines throughout the offseason um, some guys come in uh, take vacations uh, just to get their bodies to rest um, um, I've pretty much been here the, throughout the, the whole time I've I take the weekends off. Um, sometimes I get out of town. For the most part, I'm here. So I'm just trying to get better, pushing myself. With Exos locations from California to Florida, athletes can choose where to spend their winter off season. For these guys, Arizona was most appealing. You kind of get away from the LA and the Miami scene where it's not so busy and there's not just, you know, people don't recognize them. Arizona's pretty quiet. And so the good variety and the mixture of there's enough things to do, um, but you also get a little bit of seclusion here as well. The weather's way, way better than back home. I'm from the East Coast, so they're dealing with snow uh, every other week. So uh, it's, it's a consistent weather and you're able to work outside and get some good work. A lot of guys come out here and there's a lot of competition out here too. The goal is to get stronger, faster, and better but these guys still manage to keep it entertaining. The minute I don't have this much fun, I need to find a new profession. Um, it's always dictated by them as well though. When they come with the energy and they're willing to work like they are, we have a special group of guys in right now. While calling the Valley their temporary home, the players are trying to fit in with the rest of local residents. I'm sure we'll do some like, I think the walk in the mountains or something is like a big thing out here. Some friendly competition combined with rigorous training keeps these players moving faster toward their end goals. I love the competition. There's a lot of good guys that are training out here. And every day I feel like we push each other to the max to be the best that we can be. Jalen Strong, along with his teammates, left ASU with some unforgettable moments this season. But now that they've exited Sun Devil Stadium for the last time, their focus is firmly on the NFL draft. Rebecca Wynn has the story. Berkovici sets, loads up, heaving one deep, and it is caught, Jalen Strong! Jalen Strong made his mark on Sun Devil history in his two years with the team, but now he and 10 other former ASU players are focusing on their future in the game at the next level. Some people just do it just you know, to pay the bills. I do it actually because I, I love to do it. And also the, the great thing is it will pay my bills. So um, that's why I really, you know, I really play this game. I really love it. You know, I go back to doing the home visit with his granddad and his mom and, 
and uh, you know we made a commitment to him uh, that all of his dreams were our dreams. So it's it's awesome to, to have those dreams coming true, and uh, obviously he's he's the one that deserves all the credit. Uh, but but it is nice that, that that we developed him very very quickly and got him at a high level. Such a high level, Jalen Strong is currently projected to be a first round pick in the 2015 NFL Draft. Strong, along with two of his former teammates, Marcus Hardison and Jamil Douglas, hope their individual skills, assets, and most importantly, their preparation have helped them stand out to scouts at both the NFL Combine and ASU's Pro Day. It's been a long process coming back, you know, after the bowl game, kind of jumping into the process, just working out, and then, you know, had a, a senior bowl, so that kind of took a, a week out, and I kind of got banged up in the senior bowl, so it kind of took a lot of, about two weeks out the process of just training. Just trained every day. Pray, eat right, um, work hard. And, uh, I believe I did a great job today. It was uh, real fun out here. Um, really, since after the bowl game, um, headed out to Florida at IMG Academy. Started training there on combine stuff and also football position work. So, um, you know, got back here after the combine and continued with, uh, training with the strength staff here and, you know, just been working on explosive explosiveness and flexibility. While they are each individually focusing on their future, they also know that together they are connected as a team through their past as Sun Devils, where head coach Todd Graham taught them more than just excelling at football. I need to understand that, that whether you're going to the NFL or you're going to the business world or you're going on to whatever career that you choose, you know, character matters, the smarts matter, uh, discipline matters. Toughness, mental toughness matters. So uh, I think the value system that we instill is one that they're talking about. Uh, they helped me tremendously. Um, without them, I wouldn't you know, be where I am today. And um, I thank God that they came into my life a few years ago. I uh, remain there, remain loyal to me, and uh, I'll be the same to them. You know, just a fun, a fun time, you know, battled through adversity and, um, you know, overcame some things and, you know, was able to be successful on the field as well as the classroom. So I'm very happy how it turned out. ASU has probably been the best two years of my life. Not just a fact, you know, it's in Tempe. You know, you got Phoenix, you got Scottsdale. But, uh, my two years here was awesome just because my relationships with all the coaches and players, just stuff that I can take on me for a lifetime, you know. I matured here, I grew up, I learned football, and uh, I was just taking school serious, everything, you know. Coach Graham is teaching around here, you know, he want to grow you up as a, uh, a man and as a great football player, so. It's a great program. Well, then Marcus Hardison is a guy that didn't even start as a junior and uh, came on and be able to be projected to deal second, third round in the draft is something that's really, we're really, really excited about. For the first time in 50 years, the NFL draft will take place in Chicago instead of New York, where Douglas, Hardison, and Strong hope to learn if their hard work has paid off with an opportunity to make history in football yet again. Rebecca, with some of ASU's top players heading to the NFL Draft, I know you've been out at practice quite a bit lately. What is ASU doing to replace guys like Jalen Strong that were so critical to last season's success? I really think the Sun Devils have already addressed a lot of those issues in spring practice, moving DJ Foster, who was the star running back last year, to the wide receiver position. Also at offensive tackle, they have quite a bit of competition to replace those uh, former players that have left. Thank you, Rebecca. Coming up on Cronkite Sports on Fox Sports Arizona. The NBC television hit American Ninja Warrior returns in May and will feature a local Arizona competitor no one has ever seen before. Find out who she is next. Welcome back to Cronkite Sports on Fox Sports Arizona. I'm Kristen Kirby. In 2014, female competitors had a groundbreaking season on NBC's American Ninja Warrior. Those athletes inspired a local woman to pursue her own dream of competing on the show. Reporter Steve Dent has the story. Hi, my name is Rebecca Lesmus. I climb stuff all the time just because I like it. And, you know, I'm always driving around, going around, looking assessing the climbability of everything around me. Rebecca Lesmus is 28 years old. She's from Tucson. She went to school at the University of Arizona and now works as a real estate agent. Kind of funny story how I heard about American Ninja Warrior. It was summer of this year, actually. I didn't know anything about the show. And there was Casey Catanzaro doing her thing, crushing that, that course in Dallas. And I was like, wow, that looks like a lot of fun. I'm like, huh. 
actually a show like that? Man, that is so cool. Last year, Casey Cottonzaro became the first woman to complete the American Ninja Warrior course. Megan Martin and Michelle Warnke followed suit, but those women are either gymnasts or rock climbers. Constantly being asked, you know, are you a gymnast? Are you a competitive athlete? What do you do? And I wish I could say yes. And it's a, it's a disappointment every time. Not bad for real estate agent. I want to live up to my full potential, and I want to have fun doing it. I love being outside. I love the freedom. I love the feeling, and, and it's empowering. Just do a pull up or a muscle up to get on top of something, climb a building, a tree. <laughs> Like the connection and the excitement and everything formed around a, a, a dream like this is a part of what makes it bigger than me. Rebecca Lesmus has certainly had an impact on the people around her. Take me for example. She got me to do things that I thought were impossible, like this. And I've fallen and I've failed, but I've also succeeded. And so has Rebecca Lesmus. She made it onto American Ninja Warrior. Well, after I got that call and realized, wow, I'm actually gonna be on the show, it just, it's starting to become a little more real to me. You know, I think my, my perspective has actually kind of shifted and changed since the first interview. And I'm like, wow, okay, I gotta step it up. Lesmus has been training wherever she can. On this day, she is working with Lachey Marks at Phoenix Evolution as she tries to find a way to make it up that 14-foot warped wall. Scale of 1 to 10, I have to give her like a 20. She's a ball of dynamite. She's amazing. Good job. I like how you hung in there. I think she's going to go really far, and if it's American Ninja Warrior, if it's kayaking or rock climbing, whatever she does, I think she's going to be amazing. Excited to get up there. Are you doing great for your first time coming in? When Lesmus goes to compete at American Ninja Warrior, she will only have one shot to succeed, which would be tough for any athlete. Confidence is probably the hugest factor, just being prepared and being confident. If there's any sliver of doubt, the chances of actually achieving any given task with that doubt just go way down. <laughs> Come back up to the Come red one. <laughs> 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 Steve, how involved was Rebecca in high school athletics? Well, she played basketball and she also ran track, but she didn't participate in athletics in college and she always wanted to be a gymnast and she really regrets that. And what made her want to be on American Ninja Warrior? Well, she got inspired by her friends. They tagged her in video after video of Casey Cottonzaro and with the support of her friends, she really took that and then started trying to compete and trying to make it on that show. Great, thanks Steve. After the break, we'll get an inside look at what ASU baseball coach Tracy Smith thinks of his new team and the Arizona Heat. Welcome back to Cronkite Sports on Fox Sports Arizona. Arizona State baseball coach Tracy Smith recently changed scenery from snow-covered baseball fields in Indiana to the sunshine of Arizona. Carrie Crowley gives us a look at Coach Smith's transition from the Big Ten to the Pac-12. Nestled under the shadows of the Papago Buttes, Phoenix Municipal Stadium reopened its gates this February for a new tenant, the Arizona State Baseball Team. A program steeped in tradition, the Sun Devils continued the theme of transition this offseason by welcoming new head coach Tracy Smith. Smith spent nine years building Indiana University into a perennial contender in the Big Ten Conference after nine seasons leading his alma mater, Miami University. But after nearly two decades in dugouts across the Midwest, Arizona State convinced Smith to fly west for a new challenge. You're a baseball guy. There's a few places on the earth that are like this. So, um, you know, tough decision with regard to family and friends and all those things, but baseball-wise, this is a uh, a tremendous opportunity. The Kentland, Indiana native is just the fifth coach in program history, and he's beginning to set the framework for rebuilding a culture that defines the baseball legacy at Arizona State. 
guys are more enthusiastic about it. He wants a different culture about guys, wanting to come out here, work harder, get better, and uh, also bring leadership from the guys, not just from the coaching staff. Making the move from Indiana to Arizona State made sense for Tracy Smith for a number of reasons. Among many, the weather. In Bloomington, his players had to shovel snow on opening day a season to go. And here at Phoenix Muni, well, no such trouble. You ever shovel snow? <laughs> it's, it's not fun. Uh, literally, our field was covered in snow. And we, we took the entire practice day, the day before the home opener, and, and the team and shoveled it. We actually shoveled the next day all the way up to batting practice so we could simply hit on the field. Though Phoenix is more likely to produce sunburns than snowfall in February, Assistant coach Ben Greenspan, who followed Smith from Indiana, said the Sun Devils will learn similar lessons of toughness under the new staff. We wanted to play, and so we're going to shovel the field. We're going to do what we have to do to play. And I think it bred a, a culture of toughness and a, a culture of uh, you know, pride in, in our facility. And, and so we've done some similar things here, maybe not shoveling, but we've painted the bleachers with our guys. Still, one part of Phoenix Muni the Sun Devil players have yet to take ownership of is the rain tarp, which led to a bit of frustration for Smith this spring. The first time we did the tarp here, we had a little rain. Guys were stepping on it in spikes. It was driving me crazy because clearly they'd never pulled a tarp before. In Smith's short tenure, the Sun Devils have given him plenty of reasons to look forward to the future. A walk-off victory on opening night. Pitch, Woody gets a hold of one high in the air, deep to left. This could do it. A closer who just broke the school saves record and 19 consecutive home games to open the season have helped Smith grow acquainted with the desert. While it's only been a few weeks since the season started, ASU's players are responding to Smith's style. Uh, the way practices are run, the way that our workouts work, um, all that sort of stuff is a whole new whole new ball game for us, and it's definitely been a good transition for us though. After proving he has what it takes to win on the snowy fields of the Midwest, Smith is doing what he can to capitalize on his moment in the sun. A team at one high school has hoisted the championship trophy for the past five years. Find out their secret to success. Welcome back to Cronkite Sports on Fox Sports Arizona. I'm Kristen Kirby. Red Mountain High School in Mesa has won the Arizona State Championship in softball the past five years. Reporter Avery Fair explores the secret to their continued success on the diamond. Red Mountain High School has established itself as the premier softball program in the state of Arizona. No team in the Grand Canyon State had won five straight state championships before the Mountain Lions picked up their fifth consecutive title last season, including being ranked the number one team in the nation in 2013. But coach Rich Hamilton makes sure that these successes do not go to the team's heads. I think we do have a lot of pride in our school and I think our school has a lot of pride in our team. As far as us, I think we're a humble group. I think I try to keep them humble. I try to be humble myself but uh, we do understand what we're doing right now. The team's cornerstone is senior pitcher Alex Wiley, who dreamed of one day being a part of the winning culture at Red Mountain. I've been watching Red Mountain softball since I think I was in sixth grade, and I've been so excited to come here ever since. Now, Alex Wiley, um, you know, she's our, our number one right now, and that's her attitude is she says, it's my turn. It's my turn to go out and do that. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to be as good as Bree is, but uh, Alex sure is trying. Bree is Brianna Maha, a two-time first-team All-Arizona and the winning pitcher in each of the past four Red Mountain State titles. Maha is hoping to bring her winning ways to Arizona State University, and one important lesson sticks with her and she continues to preach it to her former Mountain Lion teammates. I told them, like, just go out there, have fun. Like, I know you guys are seniors, it's your senior year, you gotta let everyone else know that by the time, like, you're there, like, it just, it's gonna be over with, so enjoy it while you can. And, um, I think that's what I really lived by when I was there, and um, I just rather have them like just go out there and have fun, and then everything will fall into place. Even though she was no longer on the team, Maha's attitude continues to influence her former teammates. Bree is definitely a competitor. She loves to challenge herself, the team. Like she goes all the way, 110% every day. So it's good that you know, like you're playing with someone who just who loves the game and plays 110% because you also push yourself. She push, pushes us and her mentality and like the love for the game, it just, it makes it even better because it just, the whole outlook is just, it's just amazing. Maha attending ASU 
further brings everything full circle for Coach Hamilton and Red Mountain, who has built his teams based on a former ASU championship winning coach. We know what we want to do. We've modeled our program after Clint Myers and ASU a few years ago, about eight, ten years ago. With Maha continuing her career at the next level, many competing teams like Gilbert and Glendale are hopeful that Red Mountain will be taking a step back this season. We definitely lost some key components, like Bree is awesome, there's no replacing her. Junior Lindsay Steverson embraces the fact that everyone is gearing up to knock them down. We have a big target on our backs this year, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's a good thing. I mean, um, it's, it's fun to go out there and knowing that you're the team to beat because you won five state championships in a row. Um, but, I mean, we just take what they say and, you know, all right. We just keep it in our brain somewhere, but we know it just fuels our fire. Red Mountain's fire will continue to burn this season as the Mountain Lions will try to add yet another state championship and build on their legacy. Avery, how is Red Mountain doing without Bree Maha? The Mountain Lions have struggled a bit in their first season without Bree. It's an adjustment year for them. The team has yet to find an ace in their pitching rotation, but is a bit more balanced. The Mountain Lions will be a different team going into the state tournament this May. Thanks, Avery. And the state softball championship will be right here on Fox Sports Arizona. Well, that's all for now. For all of our ASU student staff, thank you for watching.